Hello everyone, this is Klaus Arena from the University of Tsukuba and this video is Experiment Designs in Computer Science. We are going to go for Topic 5, Multiple Comparisons. In this first video, I want to address some feedbacks and comments from the last lecture. So let's go. So uh, thank you everyone for your responses and comments for the last lecture. It's always interesting to see what you have to say, your comments about the class and also the answers to the questions. So first let's go with the first question, which was a, what is your favorite animal? We got 12 people to say cat and 10 people to say dog. It's different. Last year it was more dogs than cat. This year had more cats than dog. This year we also have two people with no animal, which is uh, totally valid if you don't really like uh, any sort of animals. We also have some two voters like panda, rabbit, tiger and wolf. So quite some like more uncommon animals here. And we had a bunch of one votes. Uh, I did not know about the Topidica, so that was kind of cool. We also had an wall and hedgehog. So thank you everyone for your comments. I got some very interesting comments here. Now, I asked two questions related to the class and I wanted to go with those. So first question was, give an example of a comparison experiment that must be paired. So let me talk a little bit. Uh, about half of the people got this question high, right. Uh, the key idea when you decide if an experiment must be paired or not is to try to answer the following question. This experiment must be paired on X. If you cannot define a concrete X, then you need to clarify your experiment more. You need to clarify the factors of your experiment more. Okay. Uh, in general, uh, to make sure that your response is correct, you need to make it explicit. So we say, in this experiment, we pair on X. I'm going to show some examples later to understand. If you cannot say we pair on X, if you cannot clearly say what X is, then maybe um, you should not be pairing your experiment. A lot of the incorrect answers suggested experiments that might have factors that could deserve pairing, but they did not make this connection explicit. So I'm not sure exactly what they were thinking. Um, so I couldn't tell if the student actually knew the answer or not. So when you are answering a question on a quiz or a question on a test, make sure uh, to make your answer explicit. If I ask you a question about pairing, you say we pair on this. Uh, if I quest, ask a question about something else, make sure that your answer is answering the question that being is asked, okay? Also note that the factor being paired is not a factor of interest. We pair factors to remove the effect of this factor. So if you are interested in the effect of a factor, that is not a factor that you should be pairing on. You use pairing to remove the effect of a factor. Also note that sometimes we can avoid pairing by changing the experiment design. So for instance, one response that was correct was we measure sweating on different exercises and we pair on the person. So the person does different exercises and we measure the sweating. Uh, this answer is correct, but we could remove the pairing from this experiment if we have a large pool of participants. Then we could have like 10 participants do experiment uh, exercise A and 10 different participants do exercise B. So this would be a, uh, this would be a way to remove the influence of individual participants from the experiment. On the other hand, uh, actually 10 is a little bit small, right? If you have a small number of participants, only 10 people to watch a sad movie, then using pairing to compensate for the small number of people is a good idea. One example, one wrong example that I found really interesting was compare sorting algorithms on different random input data. And last year, we act, I actually had a similar answer to this question. Why is this example wrong? Well, in principle, uh, the exact order of the data has an influence of the time of the algorithm. But the ordering of the data is an influence that is actually not that big. Uh, at least when we are designing a sorting algorithm, we want to design an algorithm that is robust to changing orders. So if the algorithm takes too long to sort one kind of data, but too little to sort another, then it's not a very good general algorithm, is it? So in principle, we do not expect the performance of the sorting algorithm to be fundamentally different in randomly sorted data. Okay, of course, there are a few worst cases, but in general, we expect the, uh, the, the performance to not depend on the, sorti or the of, on the sorting of the data. So in this case, 
pairing of the data is overkill and we are doing something called pseudo replication we are like we are adding some uh, connection where there shouldn't be connection and we're making our test be artificially strong and we're going to have some artificially strong conclusions which is not a good uh, a good thing to have so use pairing with care okay so some examples uh, that were uh, some good examples from the answers so the shoe experiment must be paired on the position of the player this was from the class right and the algorithm experiment must be paired on the benchmark problem note that benchmark problem is different from the data because randomly sorted data are different instances of the same problem but here on the benchmark problem we are considering that the benchmarks are fundamentally different okay so think about this difference think about why different instances of the same problem we should not pair there but different problems we should pair on that okay so another one different method to dry clothes paired on the type of fabric so depending on the type of fabric the cloth can take more or less time to dry right uh, compare the performance of athletes before and after an exercise pair on athletes so we discussed this a little bit before compare the effects of fertilizer on plant growth pair on specific plants this is a very good example uh, compare the speed of gpu versus cpu pair on application in the benchmark so you see that to answer this question we always say pair on this pair on that pair on that that's the answer uh, that's the main part of the answer for this question compare two different gpus pair on game um, note that also the answer does not need to be very long okay uh, some people wrote four or five uh, paragraphs and i think it's important to really figure out what is being asked and focus on that if you write too much well sometimes you write too much because you are a little bit uncertain you want to explain yourself but then your answer becomes buried into a lot of irrelevant information and then that might lead your answer to become wrong so try to focus on the question being asked okay now i also asked the difference between one tail and two tail tests and almost everyone got this answer correct so um one tail and two tail indicates how we model the critical zone or more specifically which sides tails of distribution we are using so this is basically the answer right another way to think about this difference is regarding the new and alternate hypothesis that we used so on one tail test the new hypothesis is bigger or equal than a certain value and the alternate hypothesis is smaller than the value or vice versa in the two tail test the new hypothesis is equal to a certain value and the alternate hypothesis is different from that value so this is another way to answer this question one important thing to remember about the difference between one tail test and two tail test is that when we perform the two tail test the critical region must be divided equally in both directions so this is a difference about how we calculate the p-value for one tail test and two tail test one student related one tail and two tail test to one nova uh, that's not necessary we can have one tail and two tail tests without a nova okay but of course we also have uh, uh, basically any test we can have one tail and two tail tests because it depends on whether we are comparing on both sides of the distribution or if we are comparing on only one side of the distribution now let me go to other comments so one student asks why do you think computer science suffers from lack of scientific rigor and this is a very interesting question uh, there are many many reasons of why i think one important reason is that there is an excessive focus in competition on research so in computer science we often see many papers even in conferences that is like oh we beat the state of the art so our uh, so our method is best and because of this extreme focus in competition uh in like okay we just want to beat this number a lot of people don't ask why why did your method beat sota a lot of people don't ask this question they say oh my, our method beat sota yes yeah the paper is finished here and that's not very interesting from a scientific point of view from a scientific point of view i don't care if a method beats sota i care why it beats sota what is the thought between be, behind it what is the thought behind the method and i think that computer science loses this a little bit sometimes 
Uh, another student said, I just arrived in Japan after a difficult time in customs. I still need time to adapt and live in Japan. Now it's not even a stable network to watch videos. Don't worry, you can catch up with the videos after you leave the hotel. So that's one thing. Uh, even some students ask, oh, I did not answer the, uh, the questions. Please uh, make sure to answer the, the, the questions for the for um, the, the, the quiz questions. But if you are a little bit late, uh, we can talk about this. Just make sure you watch the videos later or you read the material of the class later, okay? So one student asked, in this questionnaire, why did you ask us about your interests? Well, the simple answer is because we don't have face-to-face -face classes. I like to interact with the students. I, I really enjoy talking to and knowing the students. I think that people who decide to take a master degree in any topic, they are usually interesting people. They, they are very curious. They want to study about something. So I think it's interesting to ask you, like, what kind of person you are? Uh, when I read books about science, I like to know more about the scientist than about the research. I think we talked about this before in another video. So, for instance, when I ask these questions, today I learned that there is an animal called Etolpilica. So there's something new that I learned by talking to you, right? Um, I'm curious about what data you want from these random questions. That's a very good question. I wanted to do something like maybe plot this data and try to relate the data of one question with another question to see if there is anything interesting. Unfortunately, I did not have the time to do that yet. Um, if anyone has a good idea of how we could analyze this data, feel free to talk to me. Uh, I can uh, anonymize some of the data and send some of the data to you for you to try to analyze that. Uh, I'm sorry for missing the last week's survey. Uh, I interpret the not, the fact of not having classes with not having to attend. That's okay. Uh, last week was a little bit unusual. Uh, just make sure that you go and you reply to the next survey. Can you please share the name of the textbooks to be referred to this course? That's a very good question. Uh, I have some of those. If you go to Manaba, let me go to Manaba. So if you go to Manaba here uh, and you go to experiment designs and you go to resources and course information and recommended reading here, okay, uh, there are some things. I just added a new book. Um, where is it? Here. Uh, Design and Analysis of Experiment Literature for Petr Hoff. There's also a few books here. Um, oh, I did not add another book. Okay, I'll try to add more books. Um, one of the main books that we have is, I think I taught in the first class, but I will list it again, and I will list in that. So, but, but I added like the... Um, I added Electronauts by Peter Hoff. I will try to add a few more books in the recommended list. And whenever I update the recommended list, I will try to tell you here in the feedback. But yeah, that's important to, to, to share more textbooks. Um, so I think my first report is an experiment that needs to be paired, but I didn't use paired method. Yeah, that's okay. That's why I said that in the first report, you did not need to worry about... Uh, um, in the in inductive testing but if in the second report if your if your experiment needs to be paired uh feel free i mean you can even do the same experiment in the first report you can do it again in the second one of course not using the same data using new data and taking into account the idea of pairing the idea that we're going to see today of ANOVA and other ideas like that finally some of these might be a little quick sometimes i need more examples i will try to add more examples uh during the class thank you very much for your feedback okay so these were the feedback for the class today thank you everyone very much for your feedback and um i see you in the next video bye bye